Most AI tools promise speed. Very few promise speed that doesn't blow up your entire code base. That's why Cursor 2.0 and a tool called TestSprite caught my eye. Cursor feels like an entire engineering team in one window, and TestSprite feels like the senior engineer who refuses to let anything break in production. Put them together, and you get this tight loop where one builds, the other one stresses it, and they both get smarter. Cursor writes the feature, TestSprite tries to break it. You sit back and watch them fight for your code. In this video, I'll show you how to fire up Cursor 2.0 with parallel agents, plug in TestSprite MCP so it knows the repo and PRD, let AI ship a real feature, and then we'll watch TestSprite hammer it with tests. We'll show how the loop fixes everything before you ever merge. If you want AI that builds fast and keeps you face, this is the combo you've been looking for. Let's jump in, check it all out. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. I have cursor open here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project. So I can just hit open project. I'll go to my desktop and I'm gonna make a new folder and I'll call this Rails 3.09. All right, I created the folder. I'm just gonna hit open and this is a completely blank folder. Now, if you've used cursor before, you're gonna see some new things here. They have this new navigation menu right here in the center screen where we can spin up a new agent. So the terminal, we can hide files, search files and open browser. So right out of the gate, we're seeing a much more intuitive navigation system within cursor. Across the top, we have our different applications and extensions. We have our project here, which is completely blank. We could tab over to agents where we can have multiple agents working at the same time. And I'm gonna go back to the editor here. And on the right-hand side, we have our chat. We have the new Composer 1 model, which is a new Frontier model, which is optimized for speed and coding quality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin up an application from scratch. My prompt here is build a simple Rails app where, the, where there are posts in a Pinterest style layout. So not a lot of detail there, but this is simple enough that it should be able to create a app application for us to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and allow this to build and plan out our app. We have a to-do list here, which is initializing the Rails application, creating different models with description and image fields. We're gonna set up our controllers and our masonry layout with CSS. And we're also gonna have a form to create new posts. This is great. And once this is uh, done running, we should have a basic application that we can test and play with here right within the cursor environment. A couple cool things here. We want to show our terminal. So we see our terminal here and we're within the project folder that we just created. And then if we go to agents here, we can actually see our agents running. Again, we can have multiple concurrent agents working at the same time. Our agent is building the app, but we could spin up a second agent to accomplish another task if we would like. We're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and let this run. We'll go back to the editor view where we can see our different code files being generated, and we can see our entire project structure over here on the left now, which is super, super cool. This should just take a minute. Our application hopefully will be up and running. And then what I wanna show you what we can do is how we can test some of our application with a tool called TestBrite. And we'll get into that in just a moment once we get this up and running. Okay, it looks like the agent is already done and that was super fast. I'm really impressed with how fast the Composer 1 Frontier model is. I'm gonna go ahead and hit keep all. And this is what's really cool about Cursor 2.0. Previously, you'd have to go out to an external browser like Google Chrome to test your project, but now there's a browser built right into Cursor. And we're not seeing anything here, but what we can do is we can do Rails S in the terminal we can hit enter and this should spin up our application. It looks like it's running on localhost 3000. So let's type that in here, localhost 3000. And this should spin up. All right, so we have our basic application going here. We see picture style post. We have a button for a new post or create a post. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just do a test post. And there is a uh, field for an image URL. I'm gonna skip that, but looks like the post was created successfully. So this is really, really cool. It's working. Um, I created a post, but there's some things that, you know, I'm not able to do. I'm not able to edit the post. I'm not able to delete the post. If I wanted to upload an image, there's no way for me to do that. Um, so there's very limited functionality in terms of post management. Now, 
This is a super simple application, but what I wanna show you is how we can actually test our application for bugs, errors, functionality, and all that kind of stuff using a tool called TestBrite. Now, I've already logged into my account here at TestBrite. If you don't have an account, you can create one at testbrite.com. If we go home and at the NCP test, we can hit the quick install button and they actually have a button here, which is a one click button to add the cursor. Before we do that, we need to create an API key. I have three keys here, so I'm gonna revoke one of these keys and I'll create a new key and I'll call this cursor 3.0 and I'm gonna hit create. I'm gonna copy my API key. I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna hit this add the cursor button. I'm gonna hit open cursor and here we go. We're in the settings within cursor, the tools and MCP tab and all that we need to do is paste in our API key right here. We can hit install and what we've got here is a green confirmation and our seven tools enabled. We don't need to know exactly what these tools are doing because the agent's gonna understand that the MCP is installed and we'll be able to run tests automatically on our application. There's one other thing that we need to do and that's uh, generate a PRD and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. So let's go back to the browser here and we can say, got it, we went ahead and installed this. And now what we can do is we can come back to cursor and we can exit out of our cursor settings and in the agent, we can say, test our app with test sprite. And so what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna run tests on our application uh, to squash bugs, find missing functionality and all that sort of thing. So check it out. The agent over here said checking Rails port configuration to boot bootstrapping test right rails run support 3000 bootstrap from test right for front end testing this is perfect and it actually opened up this browser window within the test right web browser so we can uh, test different things we can test the front end or the back end the code base or the code diff so we're going to do front end and we're going to do code base if we had a username or a password we can put that in here so that the test right agent can log into our application and test functionality we don't have that so we're just going to skip it and then um, we can actually specify the port of the local development. So it is port 3000, that is correct. The last thing here is we need to give it a product specification doc. This will give the agent some context about our application. It could be PDF, Markdown, or other formats. We don't have that here, and I actually don't have one for this project. So what we can actually do is we can ask Cursor to create us a PRD for this project, or a PSD. Uh, product specification doc or PRD. So we could say, can you please create a PRD for this project? Okay, so you might have a PRD um, for your project um, if, you're, if you're building something on your own, but since we don't have one, we're actually gonna have Cursor generate one for us because it understands the context of this project and it can easily do that. Once we have that, we're gonna save the PRD to our computer and then we can upload it to Test Sprite's um, portal here so that it understands the PRD for our project. So we got here and check this out. We have our PRD.md, so we can keep this file. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save it to my computer. I'll come right back and we'll upload it to Test Sprite. Okay, so I created my PRD. I saved it as a PDF on my desktop called PRD4. I can open this here and then I can just simply hit continue. Okay, the local host says upload success, the page will close automatically. That's perfect. And what we can do here is we can come back to uh, cursor and we can say continue testing. Let's see what happens here. It might uh, ask us yet to run the MCP tool so we can just hit run. It's gonna bring up this configuration again. I'm just gonna upload this one more time. I'm gonna hit PRD4 open and I'm gonna hit continue. All right, and now the agent should have that context and it's gonna start generating a code summary uh, via test break. Now, the testing um, can take some time depending on the size of your application. Uh, generally, all tests will complete within 15 minutes because it has to go through the entire application and test all the functionality, um, test the design. And then what's gonna happen is when it's done testing, it should find errors within our application and then the agent can actually work to correct those errors. So we'll let this run. As we can see, the server is successful. It's creating a basic front end test plan. 
based on the code summary. So this is super, super cool. It's really stress testing our application, telling us what's wrong with it, and then it's gonna come up with a plan to fix the errors within our application. Again, this is a super basic, simple application. So I'm really curious to see what TestBrite comes up with in terms of fixes for the application. If you had a more complex application, of course, um, this would be um, in incredibly more useful, but this should at least show how TestBrite works and how it can stress test our application. So let's go ahead and let this um, keep working here. We can see that it has a test plan. Um, it has test execution. These tests will help um, prepare for us. So let's go ahead and keep all and let this run and see what happens. Okay, and I just want to show you here while this is still running, if I come back out to testbrite.com, I'm signed in, I go to MCP tests. This is my application that we just created, Rails, Rails 3.09. And we can see all of these different tests are starting to run. So it's going to test if it can create a post with valid data, um, it's going to see if I can create a post with a missing title, create a post with title exceeding max length. This is really cool. All these validation rules that maybe I didn't even think of. Um, it's going to test everything to make sure that everything works and really find the edge errors that maybe our users would identify. It's going to eliminate that all together. So check out all these tests. It's going to run through all of these tests and, and make sure that everything is working correctly. Again, this is why it could take 15 minutes because it really needs to run through our entire application and test everything. But I just wanted to show you what this looks like here on the test sprite dashboard. And once it's done, we'll be able to see which tests pass, um, what stage you're in, whether they're in progress or they failed and so on and so forth. So we'll let this keep running and we'll come back once all these tests are complete. All right, and we're back and check this out. There's a couple things here. We can take a look at the agent window here and we can actually see um, what the agent has said. Test completed successfully. Reading the raw report and generating the format report. All 15 tests successfully passed, creating the formatted test report. Now, this is not super surprising because, you know, this is a very simple application, but we can actually see all the details of this. It tested the, the post management. It created posts with real data, post display and layout, responsive design, image handling, aspect ratio and sizing. It generated files. And over here on the left-hand side in our folder structure, we can see the test sprite tests. We can set the temporary files like the PRD files. And then we can see all the different test reports and all of the code that was used to run the test. Switching over to the web view, we can actually see, here we go, our Rails 3.09 application in all the tests. And look at this, it passed all of the tests. Again, super simple application, so this is not a surprise, but if we had a more complex application that would be more prone to errors, we would likely see errors here on some of these tests and then we could use the agent to fix them. So I'm really liking Cursor 2.0 for a lot of reasons, including the parallel agents in the browser and the Composer 1 model is super fast. As you can see, we created this Rails application in less than a minute. And then TestBrite is like your you know, senior engineer who comes in and tests everything to make sure it works, make sure it's ready for production. So I'm really liking this combo. I highly recommend you check out Cursor 2.0 along with TestBrite to test your application. If you have any questions about the, how to use the uh, TestBrite MCP or Cursor 2.0, drop them in the comments below. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss other videos like this one. See you next time.